Hello. Uh, today we're here with Don Porter, the filmmaker behind such films as Gideon's Army, Trapped, here to talk about her new documentary, John Lewis, Good Trouble. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm really glad to be here. I really appreciate you all. First of all, uh, congratulations on the film. Thank you so much. How did you conceive of this project and why did you feel it was necessary to tell Congressman Lewis's story to audiences today? Um, I had worked on another film about Bobby Kennedy, um, also a politician, and John Lewis as a young man had volunteered on Bobby Kennedy's presidential campaign. And uh, during that time, I got to know a different side of John Lewis. So I just thought that this was really a great time to focus on not only his early life, but also what he is doing now. And he was open to it. And, you know, we spent a year doing filming um, and away we went. Uh, before I pass it off to Natalia, um, I'm just, I'm curious, how many times do you, there's a scene in the film where he's recounting the story about him preaching to the chicken. <laughs> it's like the people around him have heard it a hundred times before. I'm curious, just how many times do you think you've heard that story in the process of making this movie? I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that story. Um, and that's why we put that little section in the film where his staffers are saying, you know, the chickens, they bow their heads, they shake their heads, but they never quite say amen. So the fact that I can recite it to you tells you, but you know what I love about Mr. Lewis is he's a very good sport. And so even though people tease him about saying that story, um, it, the, it's done with love. Well, I'm gonna pass it over to Natalia and give her a chance to ask some questions. So uh, go ahead. Hello, Natalia. Hello. Um, first and foremost, congratulations. You did such a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your film has been extremely influential for me and extremely valuable. John Lewis' Good Trouble cannot be coming out at such an important time at the moment of this world. And I just want to say, Congressman Lewis is such an iconic figure in American history. What do you believe he symbolizes to Americans? I believe John Lewis, you know, coming from a really modest background, um, not a family that was wealthy or well-connected, um, he had a passion for education, um, for educating himself, not just with uh, school, but also with life. And I think that um, showing how you can be a curious and passionate and strong person, but you can also do that with the way of peace. And I think that that's one of the strongest messages that he has. Um, spending so much time with Mr. Lewis, you know, he's, um, he's a very calm person. He's a very quiet person. And to think that this, you know, man who is not even six feet tall, <laughs> who's very soft-spoken, he literally changed the world. His decision to work with the other men, young men and young women um, to, to integrate those lunch counters, when you think about that, they've been integrated since the beginning of time. And it was through, at, at 19, he strategized and planned and led that movement and changed it forever something that was so ingrained, he changed forever. So I think showing his persistence, but also that it's not always the loudest voice that makes the biggest difference. Yes, we can all contribute to the change, no matter how small or big, the way we're doing it. And one thing he definitely pointed out is, of course, time has evolved, we've accomplished many things, but unfortunately there's still more work to be done, but we are all united and we're doing this. And thank you so much, once again, congratulations. I'm gonna pass it on to Tiana. Thank you. Yeah, looking for Tiana. Thank you, Natalia. And I just wanted to let you know, Ms. Dawn, that it is an honor to get to talk to you today. You did a really amazing job on the documentary. Thank you so much. And while I was watching, I noticed that there were a lot of surprising things that I got to learn about John Lewis that I actually didn't know before. But what do you think is the most surprising thing that people will get from watching this? 
Um, I hope there are a number of surprising things. You know, one thing that was um, surprising to me was seeing him speak at the March on Washington. I think like usually we see Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak. Maybe you've seen photos of the crowd, but seeing that he was the youngest person to speak at the March on Washington that day. I mean, that is just awesome. But even more than speaking is the fact that he was included. He was a young man in his 20s. He was included in the group that went to visit the president, that went to visit President Kennedy. So um, the, the level of responsibility that he had as an extremely young man, that was something that was very surprising to me. Um, and then there were things like, I love that he loves to dance, um, <laughs> you know, and he yeah. really does. I mean, he loves to sing, he loves to dance. He, um, I th so what I would say is also surprising is he really loves life. You know, you see him and he's very serious and he's talking about very serious issues, but he's also just a person like you or me. He's silly, he makes jokes, he loves art and music and dance. And I think that that's important for us to remember is you don't have to be serious all the time. Um, you need a break, right? You need to do things that just give you happiness and joy. And he really does pursue things that just give him happiness and joy and aren't political. Yeah, I definitely agree because normally people would think like people in politics are like straight or like serious but he was actually really fun. Yeah, he was really fun. And, you know, we joked around a lot. Um, you know, one joke we had is we would film with him at eight o'clock in the morning. We would film with him late at night. He was always dressed up, always had a suit and tie. So one morning we were filming at his house. We arrived at eight in the morning. There he comes down and he's got on a dress shirt, but no tie. And I said, Mr. Lewis, this is a, this is a casual filming day and he said i am casual no tie <laughs> so you know um but he's also a very thoughtful person he goes to costco <laughs> he would always have like donuts and muffins and drinks for us you know um he's a very good host he's a very southern it's gentleman hard work, but you really way. did do a good job yes. thank you yes and thank you so much and now back to benjamin Uh, I'm going to pass it over to the audience to ask some questions. So, Sanaya, how about you go first? Okay. Hi. I really want to say congratulations because you did such a great film. And it's just really great seeing the past and how it really changed the present today. So, my first question for you is, have you ever experienced any racism? And um, if so... How did you tell your kids how to deal with cops? Because that's what's been going on a lot now with the police. So. Yeah. Um, you know, like, um, thank you for that great question. And um, like many African Americans, um, I have experienced direct racism. I had uh, an experience with my husband. I was pregnant with my first child. We were dropping off a friend um, at a, a home. And it was a very fancy neighborhood. Not a lot of black people lived in this neighborhood. And while we were waiting for her to get in safely, we're in the suburbs of uh, New Jersey, we were waiting for her to get in safely. And all of a sudden there was a big rap on the car door and uh, it was a police officer. We were just waiting on the side of the road for her to get in safely. I didn't want to drive away and leave a woman there in the dark by herself. And so the officer says license and registration. We weren't doing anything wrong. There was really no reason to do that. Um, so my husband puts his hands on the steering wheel very slowly and speaks in a voice that I had never heard him use before and said, officer, I'm going to reach into the glove compartment. Um, as, as a young woman, I had not had that conversation with my parents about dealing with the police. Um, but my husband as an African-American man had. And um, when I saw my husband do that, I, it clicked that he was doing that so the police officer wouldn't shoot him. And after he handed him his license, I looked behind me and there were three officers with guns drawn 
at our car. So uh, it was very frightening. It was only, you know, 15 minutes from my home, which I thought was safe. Um, and, but it really shook me up. So I wrote to the police station and complained. Uh, I got a call from the chief of police and an apology. Um, you know, this was before uh, the publication, before social media. So this was before, you know, I think I realized how often this was happening to people. Um, but, um, you know, it was something to your second part of your question that, um, you know, I, I have two boys. I have one who's 18 and one who's 16. And when they were 11 and 12, we had the conversation about how you speak to the police. Um, and I'll tell you, it is uh, heartbreaking to me that I had to say, I had to explain that the police aren't always going to do the right thing the first time. That doesn't mean they're not ever going to do it, but that as black people, we have to be a little more cautious. Um, and so, you know, we had those conversations and they both know no sudden moves, slowly turn around, um, keep your hands visible, um, don't argue, just call your parents. So, um, you know, I'll tell you one last piece to this is I heard my then 12 year old son tell my nine year old son um, when they were alone, he said, if anything happens to you, you just stay alive till dad comes to get you. And that's a really hard thing to know that my children are trying to help each other. Um, even at that young age that they were aware that the police are, are sometimes dangerous for us. And that, you know, is one of the heartbreaking things and that, you know, as Natalia mentioned, that's some of the more the work we have to do. Yeah, that's just so sad. And that must have been really traumatizing, especially for kids uh, of that age. And even if they were of the ages of 18 or any other age, it's still really traumatizing because that's just sad how we have people who are supposed to be protecting us and not. Um, now I'm going to pass it back to Benjamin. Thank you for that question, though. It's an important question. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Catherine. You've produced and directed some incredible, incredible documentaries, and they're just so lovely and everything, but did you approach this one any differently than the others? Um, I think, um, I love that question. I think you approach every movie slightly differently. Um, you know, I'm always looking for what I can learn from a subject. And so from John Lewis, one of the differences from some of my other movies is we had all of this archival footage. We could watch him grow up in public. We could watch his speeches. So I knew that we would know the public side of the man and I wanted to get to know the personal side of the man. So I think kind of focusing on that, his personal story a little bit more was a, was a big um, goal of mine in this movie. Pass it to Ruby. Uh, thank you, Benjamin. Um, it's great to be interviewing you today. Um, I just have one question for you. So um, what steps do you think would be best to take to solve racial issues and injustices that should have been resolved years ago, but are recently reappearing? Um, you know, I think that different actors in the community have different roles, you know, I think, but I think that each organization within our collective community, um, I think the first step really is self-examination and thinking about, um, you know, where do you live? Where did your parents grow up? How has whatever privilege you have, how does that impact you? Maybe you have two parents, maybe you have money, maybe you have a grandparent who's with you a lot, whatever it is. And that's not to make people feel guilty. It's just to make people aware that we all have different circumstances. And then to maybe have some empathy for people who don't have what we have. Um, so I think the self introspection is kind of the first step. Um, I think the second step for me is um, starting to talk about, you know, 
what we're all seeing and how it's making us feel. Um, and I think that also includes tolerance for people who don't understand, you know? I think that if we don't make room for people to ask legitimate questions, then we can't have any conversations. So, um, you know, I, I think there are harder conversations that people have that maybe you can find a trusted adult to help guide a conversation. But I think really thinking about both what you feel like you need to be successful, but also what kind of world, you know, I mean this really sincerely, what kind of world do you want to live in? You know, do you want to feel safe? Do you want others to feel safe? Do you want everyone to have enough to eat? Everyone to have a home? All right, if we have those goals, then we can work towards those goals. But first we have to identify what kind of world we really want to live in and not just kind of get swept along like we're in a stream. Thank you. I totally agree. We definitely have to do some self-searching before we take our first steps. Back to you, Benjamin. I love the way you phrase that. I'm going to like literally write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was great interviewing um, you today. Going to pass it off to Bailey Ray to finish this out. Um, first, it is an honor to interview you today. Um, uh, so my question is, how was Mr. Lewis so helpful, even though there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the world? Um, you know, it's a really great question because he has seen a lot of hardship and pain and anger and bitterness. Um, he's very religious. Um, I think that that makes him uh, grounded and calm. He also has a sense of purpose and he focuses on what he can control, not on what everybody else is doing. So I'll give you an example. While we were filming, um, you know, certain things would happen, politics, um, you know, children at the border being detained and, and put in those real cages, you know, things like that that would really be upsetting to me and I would say, Mr. Lewis, this happened today. And, this, and he would kind of steer me to think about, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What are you working on? So I think that he has a perspective that looks for the positive. He doesn't ignore the negative. He knows it's there. But he looks for the little pieces he can change. And I think in that way, he feels very powerful. And I think, um, you know, if you're anything like me and my family, there are certainly times in the last several years where I have felt um, scared and, you know, a little hopeless. And I think then it's, Mr. Lewis calls it having an executive session with himself. <laughs> and he says, self, <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to try and work for change? Or are you going to stay home? And he always chooses to go out and confront um, what's bothering him. So I think that he, a long time ago, decided on his life's path. And he's never really looked back from that path. And I think that he has a certain peacefulness and calm within him that allows him to, you know, go after his goals with, um, you know, strength. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, I have one more question, which is, I'm only nine years old. What can I do for a change? Um, there's so much you can do for a change, Bailey. Um, I think you can talk to your friends about how they're feeling. You know, um, we need to support each other as people. So if you have a friend who has a different background from you, it'd be really interesting to interview them, right? And to find out where are your grandparents from? Where, how did you grow up? How did they grow up? And if they don't know, then maybe you two can go together and interview them. Because I think it's when we understand other cultures, a lot of ignorance and um, discrimination comes from fear. And the fear is not, if you don't know somebody, it's easier to say, I don't like you, I don't know you. But if you, you ever had that experience of, 
you don't know somebody, they're quiet, then you talk to them and all of a sudden you realize you either have something in common or maybe they're shy. Maybe that's why they seem off-putting. Maybe they're just a shy person. So taking, you can be the person that takes that first step. Instead of you know, making a click, you can be the person that reaches out and invites somebody into your circle. You can be the welcoming change. So certainly if you're nine, um, that's something you can do. I will also tell you that you can write to your congressional leaders. Um, I'm working on a movie now about President Obama's White House photographer. And in it, we have a scene uh, where a six-year-old boy wrote to President Obama and President Obama wrote him back and also read his letter to the United Nations because he was so impressed with what this young man was saying. So don't assume that your voice is too small. Um, if there's something you really care about, you know, they're, they're your leaders too. So let them know what you think. I, I guarantee you someone is going to read your letter. Well, I'm going to go on and pass it on to Je Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much uh, for coming and talking to all of us today. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. I, I want to take your picture because I love this. Uh, I love this group. Is it okay if I take your picture to send it to my my team? Uh, yes. Sure. I was to... also going to take one for yes. Randy as well. So. Okay. All right. Well, uh, after that great interview, um, I want to go ahead and tell you guys, number one, uh, make sure to like and subscribe to Kids First. Number two, make sure to check out John Lewis Good Trouble when it comes to theaters, VOD, and vir video on demand, and virtual cinemas on July 3rd. Thank you so much for watching. This is Benjamin signing off. See you next time. Bye. We are going forward.